What's happening guys today we're talking about a key mechanism that we see every single professional player have and it is the key mechanism that can take a 3-5 an intermediate forehand to an advanced forehand maybe even a 4-5. All right so this mechanism is referred to the slot but let's talk about Scott maybe tell them what the issue is that they might be having or what we commonly see with the intermediate forehand. For sure so with beginners with intermediates what we see a lot of the time is players getting their hand, their racket, everything on the dominant side of their body, and they're just kind of poking at the ball. They're not ever entering this concept of the slot, and the slot is really what's gonna create the lag, and the lag is what creates the whip, and the whip is what creates the power, right? So all of these things are sequential, but it all starts with just understanding how to find the slot, and I think really the myth buster is you're actually swinging away from the ball. You're not right. swinging yeah. directly at the ball, and that's what we're seeing with beginner and intermediate players. Yeah, and, and I think it's the idea is that we see the ball, we line up to hit the ball, and the racket ends up moving in the direction of the ball. But if you really watch, we'll take a look at Scott's forehand here. Watch the orientation of the butt cap. So as he gets ready to hit, let's do that one time slow, 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 right there. The orientation of the butt cap is actually at this 45 degree angle. So therefore, he's going to have to swing away from his body. And then that's where the racket plays catch up to the ball. It's this catch up phenomenon that creates the lag. Now, a lot of you at home, you might be thinking, well, I've, I've worked on this. It's really difficult. My coach tells me to use the legs, kinetic chains through the legs. I can't get it to lag. Just can't feel it. Can't feel it. So what we do, what we work with our players and on, on developing this, and, and I'll show you if you have a partner, the easiest way to do it is with using a towel or a bungee cord. So here we're gonna replace Scott's racket and we'll use a towel, right? All of us have towels while we're on the tennis court. A bungee cord does work a little bit better. You do have to be careful. But what we're gonna work on is I'm gonna stand behind Scott. I'm gonna have him hold the towel and I'm gonna give him some resistance, not directly behind him. Does it matter I'm, open or closed stance for those watching at home? You can do both. Um, here, closed sort of works he, a little better. For yeah, here we'll, yeah. we'll start with closed. We'll show you the open as well, the semi-open. But, but I think the key thing here is that I'm not directly behind Scott. I'm working slightly behind him because I want his hand in that position where the butt cap is at 45 degrees we were talking about, exactly. So now, in order for him to pull this away from me, he's gonna have to use his legs. The legs will fire the hips, and oh, then it'll- to go? Sorry. <laughs> All the way? Yep. Yep, and we'll let it go. And so now that we've got the orientation of where the racket would be slightly behind him, and, and to differentiate, I'm not talking about his whole hand being behind him. We don't want that, then the swing's getting too big. It's just the racket laying back. But as I hold the towel now, Scott will have to fire through the legs, fire the hip, and I'm gonna just release when I feel tension at its max. So again, and he comes through. Now, if you don't have a buddy to work on this, what you can also do is, take an elastic band, you know, the, the real thin ones that you can use in PT, and tie it to the tip of your racket and then anchor it. All right, I know there's not a lot of tools that are teaching the lag, right? That's a great business idea. If somebody <laughs> wants to invent this tool, it'd probably be helpful. But especially like a chain link fence, right? Like if you're on the court and you can tie the bungee to the court and actually work on this firing mechanism. I mean, you can do this in your garage, tie it to your doorknob. That's true. Yeah. A hundred, yeah, there you go. Perfect, right? So. This is the best way to learn how to use the legs and how to coil and uncoil using the lag. For sure, and guys, you'll feel this finally from your lower body and your legs and hips. I think a lot of times when we're trying to learn this, the culprit is we just can't feel, we, we hear it, but we just never understand what, this, what correct That's feels right. like. So even, even though this is a dead ball drill, you're not even hitting, you're finally gonna feel what it's like to activate your legs and your hips to create that lag. Yep. All right, guys, so get out there, give this a go. Remember, keep your hand loose. That's a big piece. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, throw in the comments, give us some feedback, share with a buddy that this could help. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Take care.